Shalom, my bitches. My end is here with audio only, and I'm about to ruin my entire subscriber base. There will be no reason for you to listen to any more of my videos because I'm about to tell you every HFY story ever by Scott's Sin. A mere few million miles from a pale blue marble, alien powers bickered. We exterminate them! Kelly Tickit Sitsiv screamed, his chichin fist cracking the table ever so slightly. His massive armored frame dominated the room. Yes, the amphibious Pasha replied with a nod. Otherwise, they'll infest the entire area. The Hakani delegate rolled his ten eyes. Good, we've settled what to do about the space rats in the mess hall. It only took you ten hours. Now, what do we do about the humans? Kelly Ticket Sidziv glanced at Earth, floating in the black void, then looked at the assembled council with a shrug. Oh, blow it up. The ship's AI suddenly butted into the conversation, its voice flat and hollow. That course of action is not recommended. After some jeers and cries of, Why not? The AI brought up a holographic display in the middle of the room and explained, Simulations predict that catastrophic damage to Earth would not kill the humans, and would in fact only antagonize them. Kali Tikitsitsev slammed his fist on the table again. The table cracked further, but Kali Tikitsitsev's exoskeleton suffered far more damage, splitting and shattering to reveal the soft flesh underneath. He nonchalantly ripped it off, silently cursing himself when he remembered his species couldn't regenerate limbs. Please explain to me exactly how they wouldn't die from an asteroid being dropped on them. Pasha raised her hand. I thought we were going to glass it. Another delegate raised her voice. What? We all agreed on an old-fashioned invasion. The crowd quickly devolved into chaos and argument. We're going to virus bomb it. Throw it into the sun, duh. You're all idiots. We banished them there in the first place so it would kill them. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Pasha had enough and screamed, Enough! The assembled aliens silenced themselves and turned to the serene delegate. We'll just do a combo of all those things, hmm? Besides, they're still in the Stone Age. They won't be able to stop us anyway. That is unlikely, the AI said. Why? Turn around. Pasha complied and whipped back, only to see a significantly different Earth. Much of its greenery had shrunk, and countless points of light hovered over the planet in a pale white shimmer. That's impossible, Pasha cried. We had our backs turned for literally two minutes. This complicates things, Kelly Ticket Zidziv mumbled. But then his eyes brightened, and he snapped one of his claws. I got it. We'll drop two asteroids on them. Pasha pinched her brow and spoke. No, look, I know a few cosmic horrors and renegade AI that owe me some favors. I'll call them, and we'll get this all sorted out. Also, will not work, the AI replied. Before Pasha could ask why, live feeds were brought up from around the galaxy. The Iron Cloud's computational matrix was cold and unknowing, its drones lying still in the cold darkness of space. The biohorde was black and crisp, its brain spilled over the contents of Mars. The Seven Horrors were gone, only bits of their corrupt flesh floating at the edges of the galaxy. And none could find the words to describe what happened to the lurking ones. Pasha's mouth was agape. How? The AI responded by zooming in on the Iron Cloud's city-sized drones to show a small group of humans dancing on it, shooting guns in the air, and making generally lewd gestures. While you were arguing, the AI said, the humans have been having fun. Kelly Tikitsitsev threw his limbs up. That's it, he stated. AI, 
ordered the fleets to begin cleansing of the humans. The AI replied, Of course, I will direct the first and second fleets to the near staging areas, and I will also sniff myself because I am a butt and I love smelling farts. Kelly Ticket Tzitziv's segmented eyes dropped. Bleh. One of the navigators raised his voice. Sir, the AI's been hacked by the humans. They turned all the AI's data files into pictures of skulls. At that moment, a small furry alien made its way into the center of the meeting room, carrying a large staff and covered with tribal paint, its squeaky voice almost too much to stand. Why weren't you all? It spat while circling in place, pointing an accusing finger at the assembled crowd. But none of you listened. You cannot kill them. You can only plead for your lives. None are safe from the violent ones. What? Pasha blurted. His species worships the humans. That's what they call them. Kelly Ticket Zitziv answered. Fool! Another squeaky voice shouted from the opposite side of the room. An equally small and adorable alien appeared, wearing garments similar to the first. The Ascendant shall bring about an era of galactic peace. You spread heresy! The two small rodent-like aliens ran into each other and began to tussle, each screaming litanies and curses at one another. Every few seconds, another alien would join the brawl, hoping to appease the gods, or the high, or the warlords, or whatever other colorful names they associated with the humans. Kelly Ticket Zitziv turned away from the madness and looked out the window to see Earth had changed again. The small shoal of ships around the planet had become a near blanket, and Luna's dark side showed the crisscross of massive settlement as well. He turned back. Everyone was wearing human clothes, blue jeans, and several humans were now in the room and shooting their machine guns around randomly. And above it all, horrible human music whined over the loudspeakers. Pasha lowered her oversized sunglasses. Hey man, these humans are pretty cool. Their culture is like, infectious, you know? Kelly Ticket Zitziv gasped. Then looked down. He was wearing blue jeans. In a panic, he pushed himself away from the council and into the control room, where all the technicians were also wearing blue jeans. He looked up. Blue jeans grafted to the bulkhead. He looked down. He was now wearing a blue jean jacket. With no other choice, he slammed the airlock release button and in an instant was vented out into space. But instead of being greeted by the welcoming embrace of cold death, he saw only a patchy blue wall. He opened his mouth to scream, but there was no air. No nothing. Only blue jeans. Alright guys, so I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a like or a subscription, and uh, give me a comment on what you thought of everything. So, with my current setup, I'm back on my laptop recording, not on my desktop. And just let me know if there are any issues with that. If you've noticed any kind of dip in audio quality, let me know, and I can rearrange stuff to uh, allow me to actually record on my desktop again. Anyways, oh, I also uh, just finished up my classes for the uh, modeling agency that I, wor that I am hoping to work with. Um, not certain if I let you guys know, but, uh, I am making my first steps into actually becoming a professional voice actor, and, um, I'm currently in the process of scheduling my interview to actually have an agent, and I am wildly excited. That's why I haven't been posting recently, is because I've been working mostly on that. And now that I'm finished with classes, I can focus back on the channel. Anyways, have a nice one, y'alls.